Purple Heart Homes presents Putting the Pieces Back Together, a forum for veterans and the community to connect. Here are your hosts, veterans John Galena and Brad Borders. Good morning, good morning. Um, uh, how are you? I'm amazing. How are you, you doing? Are you John Galena? <laughs> uh, you know, no, the name tag has been changed. I am no longer John Galena. It's you are no longer John Galena. Uh, I was about five minutes ago. John Galena, uh, in a, John Galena is in an undisclosed location uh, on a sec- another secret mission. Another secret mission. Another yeah. Secret oh, yeah. Mission. When do we get to tell about this? Like, yeah, mission? we'll just tell, talk about the secret mission. Hey, welcome to Putting the Pieces Back Together, presented by Purple Heart Homes. Purple Heart Homes is a 501c3 based out of Statesville, North Carolina. We do work nationally. And we are involved in helping veterans overcome housing issues through safety and accessibility re- renovations and solving veterans' homelessness issues and building tiny houses and just generally trying to do good things every single day. And you can find out more about us at phhusa.org. That's phhusa.org. And we do have a guest host today. Filling in for John Galena is uh, Devlin McGregor. Um, <laughs> Or as we call him, Devil Dog Devin. We have Mrs. Giggles here. Good morning. Hello. <laughs> she loves being on the radio, and we have a fantastic Hi. show for you. We have our friend. Are you a doctor? No. You look like a doctor. Do- <laughs> doctor, <laughs> doctor, Dr. Paul Frazier. Veach. Doctor, <laughs> we're gonna we're promoting you today. We're gonna give you an honorary degree of Doctor Paul Veach, uh, otherwise known as Frazier. Uh, we'll get more into that here in a little while. Um, John is uh, John is on a secret mission with our marketing team and doing they're doing a project uh, with Lamar Austin and Lane Talent, our marketing director. They are in Arizona helping a veteran. They ran a um, big project yesterday. Oh, yeah. uh, yeah. What happened out there? Uh, they're they're doing some uh, some flooring and things. I, I believe that uh, this is in conjunction with uh, Fox uh, Sports. Fox Sports, yeah. And yeah, this is going to be a big, huge project. Uh, they, were, they had a lot of volunteers on site, and there's some uh, talk of some kind of big event that's going to be happening out there in a couple of weeks. I don't know what they I call that. Like, what is that they call? Oh, it's the Super Bowl. Oh, yeah. yeah, and Fox Sports is covering the Super Bowl, and. Uh, uh, we have been invited to be a part of some of the festivities with the Super Bowl. I don't know exactly what that's going to be. We we think it's part of the pregame activity, uh, the the stuff leading up to the Super Bowl. So we probably won't actually get on the air during the time. So is John going to do the coin toss? Is that what's oh, going to happen? Oh, gosh, man. Wouldn't that be cool? <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. John doing the coin toss. Okay, that'd be great. Man, I'd love to see uh, uh, be... see, see our logo up there with John Galena. Yeah, that'd be crazy. Maybe, 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 maybe they'll allow John to may, maybe coach for one of the teams, um, and uh, of course, I don't know how much John knows about football. So uh, J- that John, might not be great. D- John's not a sports guy. He doesn't. He doesn't watch. Well, we'll let him uh, <laughs> dispute that when he comes back. So, uh, but anyhow, they're out, they're having a great time, and and they'll all be coming back today. Mm-hmm. Uh, another veteran helped uh, over. Uh, we're up at like a, a thousand thirty four veteran projects uh, completed over the over the lifespan of uh, Purple Heart Homes, and uh, uh, we're really excited about. Uh, about moving forward with that. Um, I just wanted you to know this is complete aside, but um, I received a, a, a late Christmas present over the weekend oh. from my mother, uh, from my mom, Sarah. Um, and uh, she, uh, my mom has been a musician uh, all her life. Uh, she plays uh, numerous instruments and uh, um, played, uh, um, you know, piano and, and, and guitar. And then about 40 years ago, maybe longer than that, she took up playing the Mountain Dulcimer, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, I'm and, familiar with that. Uh, yeah, and so uh, Mountain Dulcimer is a four-string instrument that sits on your lap. And um, anyhow, uh, she's been playing this instrument, and then she started playing a hammered dulcimer, and she start, she had a, my mom had a band, like a touring band called wow. the, the Front Porch Strings, right? <laughs> yeah. And they would travel around, and she's played at, 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 at play, places like Merle Fest and, and all, all over, and, and it's just pretty incredible. Well, anyhow, she had, there's, a, there's a friend of hers named, named Lois, and uh, she, she uh, has a, a, a beloved uh, life partner named Ehukai, and uh, he's from Hawaii. Wow. And they came to visit this weekend, and my mom purchased uh, my Christmas present, which is a brand new. I got a dulcimer. 
Really? Yeah, I got this really that? cool look. I was going to bring it in for show and tell this morning and play a song, but I'm not quite good enough <laughs> to play a song. Oh, yet. no, no. All right. Hey, so all you listeners out there, if you yeah. want Brad to play the dulcimer, on well, air, I'm going to need I'm you gonna to uh, like and subscribe. Like and, and all subscribe that stuff. and hit that little bell icon <laughs> button so that you can get notified when I'm playing. If you really want your ears to burn, uh, let me play and sing, oh, which would oh be man, horrifying. That would be a treat right, right there. But I'm it's like... a beautiful instrument. It really is. And they're, they're quite, um, they are sort of, they're easy to learn how to play, but there's only four strings on them. And so, uh, yeah, I was really excited to be able to, to get that. And so my wife is having to, been, she's having to endure my practice <laughs> sessions, right? And so. He's actually um, not. I mean, he plays guitar, so it's not like he just picked up this instrument and started playing, and it sounds right. horrible. It's not. Okay, thank well, you. Well, Tammy <laughs> usually tells the confident. truth, so uh, yeah. it's, it's probably true. So, so, so then, great. We'll, so, we'll, yeah, maybe for show and tell, I'll practice a little bit. I'll, the first song I'm going to learn how to play is This Little Light of Mine. Can you sing that one? Uh, on the radio? I don't think yeah, you that I mean, Well, you I can mean, you sing it? But I, not, I can, not necessarily on the radio. Can. Yeah, sure, sure. Yeah, yeah, okay, so I'm going to learn how to play this little light of mine, and me and you are going to sing it together at some point in the next few weeks. All right. I, on I, air. Absolutely. Okay. We'll do it. All right, wonderful. <laughs> wonderful. We're going to start a band. Yeah, we're going to start a band. Like we'll call the, it'll be called the uh, Front Porch Swings. <laughs> the That's Front Porch Swings. Yeah, that'll be the name of our band, in honor of my mom. So, uh, oh, yeah, there were Devlin and Brad. That's right. Yeah, yeah Devlin, Devlin and, and Chap. Brad. Yeah. <laughs> Devlin Devil, and Chap. I like that. Devil and Chap. Yeah, yeah that'd yeah. be good. Oh, speaking so. of moms, can I just say real quick, uh, my mom's birthday was the 21st. Happy birthday, Mama. Uh, sorry I missed that. Uh, yeah. 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 And yeah. and I hear we have uh, another one of our uh, uh, radio professionals uh, is having a birthday uh, this week. This Friday. This Friday. It's Pat Shannon's birthday. And for those that don't know, immediately after our show, Pat Shannon comes on with what's called the Home Ad Show. And if you need to buy or sell anything, you can listen to that. And Pat has been around here for about 112 years. <laughs> so, well, um, that's, that. I mean, that'd be pretty he impressive. Is, he is since famous. He's got the birthday. most amazing radio voice, too. Yeah, he does. He's incredible. So, uh, but uh, hey, anyhow, we are really glad to have uh, Paul Veach. Uh, in the studio today, uh, we're going to be talking about uh, Reboot Recovery, and uh, Paul's been instrumental in, uh, in, in sustaining that program that uh, was started here, wow, six years six ago. Years. Yeah, that is crazy, uh, and to think of where it started with a couple of us in a room <laughs> thinking, hey, this might be a good idea to help people, and then now it's grown to multiple courses all around the area, and we're going to talk a little bit more about that. And uh, we're glad you're uh, listening this morning. And so, uh, Paul, uh, give everybody a little, give us the bio. And if you have any veteran connection in your family, tell us a little bit about that. So. Okay. All right. I was born and raised in Columbus, Ohio. And my wife and I moved here with our family in, in 2000. Um, and I'm a therapist by trade. And I work at North Iredale High School as an intervention counselor, helping kids in crisis and getting them linked up with services and doing education and drug alcohol prevention, mm -hmm. that kind of thing. And one of the things that I have an interest in is treating trauma in my private practice and um, got to know Brad over the years through F3 workouts mm -hmm. and um, other ways too. And um, you got this idea to bring Reboot yeah. To the yeah. Statesville area. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. So yeah, for Reboot is a, is a, is a curriculum, um, that was developed by some folks, uh, over in Tennessee. Um, and it was originally developed for, for combat veterans. And, um, I found out about them when I was still on active duty. I got a message from a gentleman that I had served in Iraq with and, uh, just a passing thing. He said, Hey, I heard about this thing. You might be interested in it. Um, and so uh, I, I went to the website, and I was like, wow, that's really kind of something I've been looking for. Mm -hmm. and, and, mm -hmm. and so Reboot is a, is a faith-based approach to trauma recovery, uh, and it was specifically designed for combat vet veterans. It was the, the verbiage that the curriculum was written in was something that every combat veteran can identify with. And, um, and it's a really cool story about how it got started. It was very organic. Um, it, it wasn't developed by a big company. It was, it was developed by, 
just um, uh, some folks named Evan and Jenny Owens that um, had a passion for for helping people. They they were neither one of them were in the military, but they served in a military mm-hmm. town, um, and um, and they had connections uh, with uh, combat veterans because of. Jenny's work as a as an occupational therapist, and and they just began inviting inviting people over to their homes these these veterans because she saw that they not only had uh, outside wounds of war but inside wounds of war, and um, um, over the process of their having people over sharing a meal together, the discussions began to get a little more serious, and a lot of the questions came up and why did this happen and why did I survive and why did my friend not survive and and things like that and. Um, they realized that they kind of were on to something. And so um, long story short, they, they, they developed it into a curriculum with some help from uh, some really smart folks. Chris uh, Asda. Chris and, and Ranella Adset. Uh, and Chris is, uh, if you go to the VA and you get a, you get a book on trauma recovery, uh, Chris has literally written a book on it. I mean, <laughs> you, know, you, know, I mean you know, it's no, it's no joke. Books. And, and, yeah, books. Yeah, a number of books. And so Chris and Ranella came alongside uh, Jenny and Evan and, and so over the years, they, they saw this thing grow. And uh, um, so what happened was is, I, is when I came off active duty, I was looking for an outlet, right, something to do. I, want, I, I wanted to continue ministering to people who had served and uh, got a job at Purple Heart Homes. And, and, uh, and so I, I determined that I probably ought to gather some smarter people than me. And so I got with, with Paul and, uh, um, and, and John Wilson. Um, and, uh, we, uh, had a meeting and I was like, Hey, there's this thing we should do this. And, and then we didn't know what we were doing. And, and, uh, and you were like, um, gosh, I don't know if anyone's going to show up, yeah, but we're just going to do this gonna, anyway. Yeah, we're just going to do it anyway. I don't know if anybody would show up. And, you know, it was interesting. I, so I didn't know a lot about the veteran community. It was weird because, the, you know, I knew a lot about serving in the army, but I didn't know a lot about the veteran community and. I didn't know whether we had any veterans, combat veterans here, right? I wonder if there's any combat veterans in Iredell County, right? And so I got with a veteran service officer, and he was like, well, we've got about 17,000 veterans living here. (laughs) And I was like, well, I bet there's somebody that went to war in the middle of all this, right? And and, and oddly enough, that was kind of how I met Dale and John um, at Purple Heart Homes because I knew about them, and I was like, well, those guys went to combat. I bet they know some combat veterans that might need some help, and and that's, that that precipitated that discussion. And so, uh, so in 2017, uh, we kind of got the ball rolling, and we had three people show up to the class. Maybe four. Yeah, and it, and and one of them was <laughs> yeah maybe I think it was maybe four. You count Tammy. It was five. Yeah, you know, count Tammy. It was five, right? But it turned out to be, and and you know, I, I look back at that class. It turned out to be this um, really amazing time. And, and specifically because of really because of one person, right? Because Dave Childers uh, came to that class, and so for those <laughs> he that, was dragged. Uh, to that he class. was dragged to that class, and he was. I mean, like the first night, he we realized that. It was someone in the class that he didn't get along with, <laughs> and <laughs> and he yes, which is everybody, <laughs> yeah, which is everybody, right? We, like, uh, huh? hey. Hey, yeah, like like from the old neighborhood, right? Like <laughs> yeah, and so he pulled me aside and said, said uh, you got five seconds to tell me why I should be in the room with that blankety blankety blank, and I was like, oh my goodness, right? And <laughs> but he ended up staying, right? And um, mm-hmm. so. Um, Dave, it, it turned out to be Dave had this incredibly powerful story yeah. that over the course of the class, it started to come out all of the things that Dave had been through, uh, and he had really never talked about it. And uh, it was so incredibly powerful to, to hear what he had been through and and, uh, um, and how this little service dog uh, had impacted his life. And so uh, we're getting ready to come up on the break here in just a minute. And when we come back, I want, I want to talk to Paul a little bit about uh, how the course has grown, but uh, kind of expand on Dave's story. Uh, and Dave's actually been a guest on our show before. So uh, uh, when we come back, we'll we'll talk a little bit more about Dave's um, writing a book because of Reboot. Wow. Right? It's just incredible. Um, and so uh, we're really we're really glad you're here. Uh, and then um, I will say this: um, I'll uh, will attempt at next week maybe to bring a dulcimer in. 
um, to, uh, uh, but uh, we'll be back here uh, in just a few minutes. Hang with us. If you're on Facebook, stay on. Maybe post a comment if you like. Thank you so much. So ornery about that. Oh, he's ornery, man. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> so Dave's probably watching now. So Dave, uh-huh. you know when we call you ornery, we love you. Uh, <laughs> we, we love you with, love with a ease. deep, deep abiding love, yeah. love of uh, oh, the Father. So um, <laughs> hey, uh, while we're on Facebook, uh, there's, there's, Ann, your wife Ann shared uh, shared this so uh, all of your people can watch. But uh, right. so everybody calls you Fraser. Frazier. So uh, let, let's. Uh, what's the story behind uh, Frazier? Well, you know, I'm a junior shrink, so I'm a few <laughs> buckets shy of a, of a doctor in, in counseling. Right. Uh, after 120 hours of postgraduate, I decided that was enough. And right. I just get to work. Uh, yeah. You know. Um, so I show up to work out, and, and we're looking for a name for Frazier. And of course, you're not allowed to pick your own name. That's right. At the F3 workout. That's right. Yeah. So Frazier, it was. I believe you were the one. I think I was. That yeah, coined I think that I was. Yeah. Term. Frazier, and, yeah. And my so, middle son, uh, who has a black belt. Uh, became Crane. Yeah, that's right. Oh, yeah. So Frazier now Crane. it's Frazier wow. Crane. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Frazier Crane. Yeah, I forgot about that. That's awesome. Yeah, for those who've never seen the show, Frazier, go back on your uh, <laughs> you, your YouTubes and your Netflixes and and watch that show because it's pretty funny. So uh, so and and in the F three in the annals and lore of F three, so everybody for F three stands for Fitness Fellowship and Faith. It's the grassroots men's fitness and leadership movements all over the country, and we have. We have one of those workouts uh, here in Statesville. Uh, that ha- uh-huh. stuff happening seven days a week, and Devlin has actually been to uh, a couple of uh, F three workouts. Right, and I, I need to get to a few more. Of it. I, I, <laughs> I I put the emotional headlock on him uh, a few uh, weeks back, and and he showed up, and I and te- you know who didn't show up? Well, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> Well, because that was the running workout, and I can't do it. That's a work. There's a word for that. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. And so it's funny. Yeah, what is that called? I'm trying to remember. Yeah, there's a word. There's a word for when the and when an F3 guy invites you to a workout, and then you show up and he doesn't. <laughs> yeah, I can't remember what that's uh, called. That's called leaving someone out to dry. Or, yeah. Or, yeah. Or, it's called rude. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. Well, there's also a word that we craned. Uh, that we uh, that we coined uh, called being Frasiered. That's when if you show up to lead a workout and no one shows up. Oh no! Yeah, and oh. it started. That was that was uh, Frasier got Frasiered. I got <laughs> Frasiered at MLK yeah. Park. At yeah, five in the morning oh, by yourself out there going okay. With, and then but did, then I would say this with sh- shady <laughs> things going on behind <laughs> the bathroom. <laughs> That's awesome. All right, we're getting ready to go back live here in about nine seconds. (laughs) Welcome back to Putting the Pieces Back Together, presented by Purple Heart Homes. You can find out more about us at phhusa.org and find out what we're doing for veterans each and every day of the year uh, to make sure they have their best life. Uh, so uh, we're joined by uh, Dr. Fraser Crane. <laughs> <laughs> Not in real life. <laughs> Not in real life. Paul Veach is with us. Uh, we're talking Reboot Recovery. Uh, if you're interested in finding out more about what Reboot is, you can go to their website at RebootRecovery.com, and you can find out all about the classes that they offer um, all across the country, and you can find out if there's one in your area um, wherever you are listening. And so, um, so, um, going back to, we got started and, um, a gentleman by the name of, of Dave Childers came, uh, Dave was, a uh, had been a Marine, uh, was in law enforcement for a long time and then served, uh, in Iraq and Afghanistan and Kosovo as a, uh, as a contractor, um, training police forces. And he actually, uh, Dave was actually in Fallujah during the Battle of Fallujah. I think Dave at the time was like 45 years old, uh, fighting alongside 18, 19 year old Marines. And uh, um, it was an incredible story uh, about how Dave had traveled all over the world. And uh, he's got some amazing stories uh, about that. But uh, in the process and reboot, um, what do we do at the at the end of every class? Everybody gets to do what, Paul? 
we get to graduate. Yeah, and what do they? What do, what do we have them do? What does each participant do at the end of the class? Well, towards the end of the class, um, they're encouraged to share their story. Yeah. Um, and you know, we try to be flexible. With yeah. That, you know, to what they're comfortable doing, but we we'll have one or two share at graduation as well. Yeah. Yeah. To a, to a larger audience, we yeah. we um, invite community members. Yeah. Whom we think might benefit from the class or know someone who might benefit from the class mm-hmm. or who are leaders in the community who can spread the word. Yeah, yeah, and it's really good. Well, so Dave, when he wrote his, I asked him to share his story at our first graduation because there was only three <laughs> graduating. <so. laughs> it was pretty easy to pick somebody. But so Dave wrote out, uh, it was nine pages long, single space, oh right, nine pages. And I, and I looked at it and I was like, okay. Um, that's going to be pretty long, and it was. It was like forty-seven minutes uh, of <laughs> right, that first graduate. It was so, it, it was, but it was a compelling story. Well, the great thing about Dave was, is he just, Dave just kept writing after that, and mm-hmm. uh, and that turned into a book <laughs> called "God Sent the Dog." Uh, this in, incredibly long book, and and, and in Dave's there's no the, chapters. There's no chapters, <laughs> and, and it just it's it's stream of consciousness thinking. It's incredible. No periods. But, or <laughs> punctuation. And so, anyhow, he he wrote this book, and it's you can buy it on Amazon. Um, and Dave gives all the proceeds from the book uh, to Purple Heart Homes, right. um, and he's sold a bunch of copies of this thing, and uh, it's pretty. It, it is it is pretty incredible. And it's funny how uh, when he he gave me one of the first copies, and, and I've got I've got a signed copy by the author. It's one of the few books that I have <laughs> like that, right? And and uh, I was like, Dave, this is really long. It's like 650 pages. He was like, yeah, it was uh, 1,200 before, but I cut out all the cuss words. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> That's fantastic. So, uh, so anyhow, hey, so we, so, we, uh, so we graduated that class. We then immediately after that found out uh, from Reboot that um, they were offering, they were expanding the program to first responders, mm-hmm. right? And uh, – so we were like, hey, we've got a lot of first responders here. and Steve Warwick's yeah, joined uh, us at that graduation. That's right. Yeah. And uh, we had – so we, we – um, the first uh, first responder class was over – we planted it over in Rowan County, and George Campbell uh, led that. Uh, so George is a local Army veteran, and uh, his pastor out there was a first responder, and they had like 30 people show up for that, all volunteer firefighters and EMS folks. Um, it was really, it was really incredible, um, and that, and then we started running those courses here, and we had folks from our sheriff's department and our police department mm-hmm. and EMS and ECOM and and all of the, all of the first responder, you know, community was represented in that class, and we saw some incredible healing take place. Um, and then, so we ran those classes uh, coinciding with the combat veteran classes, and we've had over over a hundred veterans come through the combat class. And then, about I guess it was two years ago that uh, Reboot launched their third course, correct? Which is called Trauma Reboot. Tell us a little bit about Trauma that, Reboot Paul. Recovery. So, yeah. so yeah, one class kind of was birthed out of the other yeah. class, and um, and trauma. Reboot Recovery is for the general public, and we have folks attend that class who may or may not be uh, veterans or first responders, Um, and they might be in there from complicated grief, Mm -hmm. um, untimely death in their family, um, childhood abuse, psychological abuse in their marriage, um, domestic violence, um, car accidents, anything. Yeah that could cause trauma in a person's life. And you don't necessarily have to have post-traumatic stress disorder to come to a, a reboot class. Yeah. But we've all experienced some form of trauma or have had a, a trauma reaction mm-hmm. at some point in our life. So we're careful not to compare each other's trauma, but to accept each other's trauma. We all react to things our own way. Yeah. And what's traumatic to me may may not be traumatic to you sure. yeah right but but yeah. we're there for the same reason and um how do you define um from a clinical standpoint how do you define ptsd so post-traumatic stress disorder known as ptsd um it's kind of 
what we call a normal reaction to an abnormal event. Mm. We're equipped to deal with things. We have resources and abilities to deal with things, but sometimes our circumstances go beyond what we can handle. You mm-hmm. know, we can lift 100 pounds. I can lift 100 pounds over my head, but if you put 500 pounds on that dumbbell, I'm crushed. Mm-hmm. You know, that doesn't make me weak. Right. That means the weight was yeah. more than I I could bear. There's a difference between that and, and, and weakness. Yeah. So the reboot courses are about about healing. Mm-hmm. You know, not about being broken, not about being sick. Yeah. And there's so many different facets to how people react to trauma. You know, sometimes people have um, um, there, there's a there's a term that's been uh, characterized in the military community that came out of a study. Um, where it's called moral injury, right? Right. Or and and in reboot, it's called they call it soul wound, right? Mm-hmm. It's kind of that um, fuzzy area where it it really doesn't fit what the you know the diagnostic statistical manual says for what PTSD is. Um, it is typically characterized by guilt um, shame. and shame, uh, regret, uh, those kinds of things, and so. Um, PTSD can kind of be uh, some of the symptoms or, or, you know, flashbacks or bad dreams or anxiety at the sight of certain mm-hmm. things or a smell. Um, but, but a soul wound is more characterized by my lack of response or, or, or an act that I did that violates my own moral compass. Mm-hmm. And, and, uh, um, and so many times we, we, we see that played out. Um, there was one and uh, one particular uh, event that happened in the um, that was brought to light in the in the first responder course with a, um, a, a sheriff's deputy who had gone on a call uh, from a family who was in distress and the the husband was being very violent and she was scared for her life and you know they showed up at the house and, and the gentleman had a weapon and and it escalated and and the and the deputies had to open fire and mm-hmm. and, and and you know unfortunately killed the man and uh he had two teenage boys uh at the time and uh and this wife and and this particular officer he just went on with his life but he never forgot about seeing that mm-hmm. wife and those kids after he had taken the life of their of her husband and their father and he lived with this shame and guilt, even though he knew, you know, it's like he knew he had done the right thing, but he still felt bad about it. So his moral compass said, you don't kill people. Um, but but yet he knew he was trying to balance that, and it just turned into this horrible um, back-and-forth struggle that he had internally. Um, well, what happened through the class is during the class, the, um, um, the, uh, the wife reached out to him and asked him to come over for dinner. And this was three or four years removed from the actual event. Um, and he called me. He was like, should I go? And I was like, I don't know. How do you feel about it? I mean, are you thinking she's, you know, <laughs> she's inviting you over to, to you know, mm-hmm. seek vengeance? She's, he's like, no, I don't, I don't think that at all. And I was like, Man, well, maybe you ought to go. And he went over and had dinner with, um, with, this, with this lady and her, and her kids. And, and what he found out was is that, her youngest at the time, I think he was like 12, he had determined that day that all of this went down that he was going to he was going to kill his dad for beating on his mom. Right. Oh and and uh, so anyhow, it was all of that came to light. The, the story was filled in and, and uh, um, there was a lot of forgiveness. And she ended up she ended up coming to graduation uh, with him. Um, to to celebrate his completing the course, right? And so that's just kind of one micro story um, of some of the things that have happened through through this class. And so uh, um, that's a really inspiring story. Um, oh, absolutely! Hey, uh, real quick, uh, you're listening to Putting the Pieces Back Together, presented by Purple Heart Homes. If you've missed any part of this bo- uh, broadcast, you can get it on iHeart Radio or Spotify, wherever you find your podcasts. Oh, thank you, Daddy. Appreciate that. Mm-hmm. So, hey, Paul, do you got um, you got any? Um, is there a, a particular uh, story that come, has come out of the trauma reboot class, the general class that uh, that that would uh, speak to our audience? You know, we've we've had a lot of um, 
participants with complicated grief, just multiple grief on top of grief, and then some more mm-hmm. grief as as if that wasn't enough. Yeah. And you know, one one of our participants wasn't comfortable sharing her story, but she wanted it put in the bulletin. One of her takeaways, and one of her takeaways was, you know. Um, you know, we go through struggles, and when you overcome a struggle, you don't keep it to yourself. You sh- share it for others mm-hmm. and let others l- learn yeah. from those struggles. So sharing wasn't any more a shameful thing. It was a helpful thing. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, We've seen that on multiple occasions right. where people are really – really embarrassed about the way they're feeling and feel like they're alone, that, that no one else understands what they're going through and until they hear others, um, you know, expressing themselves in, in, mm-hmm. in a safe uh, environment where, where there's trust uh, and they hear others sharing their stories, then they go, oh, I'm not alone. Um, I'm, I'm, it's okay if I say something about this, mm-hmm. right? And, and then that's, that's kind of how it per- itself perpetuates. Right. The, right, the healing process self perpetuates, and uh, it's really powerful. It's really powerful to watch. So um, um, I, we do have uh, we have courses uh, starting soon. Um, we have uh, there's a the first responder course uh, that's going to be starting. Uh, if I'm correct, here's March second. Yes, um, at South Iredale Fire Department, Melinda and Bill Sherrill will, will be leading that course and they're former graduates of our statesville oh, wow. class yeah, that's right and they've mentored so they're you know sometimes in in reboot our roles change yeah you know yeah for instance with our trauma recovery class in statesville here um i'm stepping back and yeah. paul and gladys lowry are leading that class and um doing things more behind the scenes and we just rotate through our roles yeah. And, it, and, and the stats on the classes nation, nationwide are it's like 50 percent of the people that graduate go on to become some kind of leader in some way, shape or form. Either they're serving those that are coming, uh, but that tends to um, uh, it, that, that again, that self perpetuates and it becomes this uh, uh, continual cycle of people getting healed and then bringing healing to others. It's, uh, so it's all peer led. And, mm-hmm. and so that's a beautiful part about it. And, and everybody's a volunteer. Um, right. And we, I had the opportunity to share this to David Moss's Sunday school class this week. And I had a slide up of 30 graduates. Half of them were first responders and the other half um, were, uh, were combat. Mm-hmm. And of those 30 folks on stage, 17 where you be either became leaders yeah. or mentors yeah. in future classes. Yeah, that's wow. really cool. That's that's pretty amazing. Yeah, that is really cool. Yeah, and that, that mentoring aspect is uh, is so crucial and critical uh, of folks that come and they're kind of everything's kind of weird and they're not sure why they're in this room and they're not sure what's going to happen. And then, but then they but then they meet some people, right? Yeah. And and they and they kind of and they kind of get uh, uh, they get yeah. And Devin can attest to that, yeah, right? It's, it's, it's an yeah. odd feeling. Uh, it, it is an odd feeling. Yeah. And so you just went through you just went through the combat class uh, here last fall. I, I did uh, I, after uh, someone <laughs> agitated. Uh, um, Agitated? <laughs> well, that could be one word. Uh, yeah, yeah I, I was trying to articulate that properly, but uh, I think um, uh, politely nudged for <laughs> several months. Yeah. That's a good word. Politely nudged. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so, like, so Devin, you coming tonight? Yeah, uh, yeah we're gonna, you know, we're starting at six. We're gonna have really good food. I would always entice people with the good food that we <laughs> yeah. have. Right? It, you There's know, and like it was food. good food. It was, it was good for the food. bad company. Yeah, yeah, and so. Uh, uh, hey, we're getting ready to come up on another break. After the break, we're gonna Devin's gonna uh, talk to us about the project of the week because uh, at some point in the show, I missed the opportunity to do that. <laughs> and so uh, we're gonna just do it at the second break today. And Devin's gonna tell us about the project of the week. We have the project going on in Arizona. Devin will tell us about his project of the week and another one that we've got going on, and maybe ways that you can help out with that. 
Um, also, too, if you're interested in volunteering, um, we're going to talk a little bit about volunteering after the break as well. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, it's volunteers that make programs like Reboot work. It's volunteers that make uh, uh, organizations like Purple Heart Homes um, have the impact that it has. And so we'll talk a little bit more about that after the break. And we'll also uh, hear from the devil dog himself. <laughs> um, Devlin McGregor with the project of the week. And so uh, we hope you'll uh, stay tuned uh, and we'll be right back. So, yeah, even though we are broadcast professionals, sometimes we don't plan very well. Well, and, uh, <laughs> so and, I, <laughs> I think maybe next time that John's out, you should let me do the show clock, and I'll just kind of nudge you. You yeah. can. You can. You can absolutely do that. I am stream of consciousness thinking. So, uh, uh, you, Two people with uh, ADD should not be yeah, that's right. on the radio we should show. Not. We should not. not. Who turned us loose on these things oh in gosh. here today? <laughs> Uh, that's awesome. So, uh, Devin, what, what did they, did they, so your nickname in F3 is Devil Dog. They, they, right? well, and they just, they just, was... they just gave that to you. They were just like, yeah, you can be Devil Dog. They just allowed <laughs> that to happen. <laughs> you, uh, you preempted that. I did. Okay. Well, yeah, see, so I did I, one good thing for you. Yeah. And, and so I've only been, been to two of them. Now I feel bad. I got to go to more. It's like. Well, the good, the good thing is, is I save you from getting a nickname like Muffin or something, right? Oh, yeah, I do that got a could, bit of a well, Muffin no, I'm, not, I'm just telling you, man. So some of the names can be brutal. There was a guy okay. in, um, there was a dude in Charlotte. Um, his name was John Crawford, and he became known, known as Cindy. What? Yeah, Cindy. Yeah, Cindy Crawford. Yeah, oh, yeah. that's yeah. actually a great right. name. I, yeah. you know, I don't mind names like that. Yeah, and they it? would go, "Oh, hey, Cindy, how's it going?" Right, you know. And so, yeah, man. So there's some really, uh, really amazing names out there. It's better than um, my nickname in the Marine Corps. That, did you ever watch that movie Powder? Like the the no. albino guy, and he's like, I think I remember. He was something. bald and ripped. Right. That's what I look like in the Marine Corps. I was <laughs> like a, bald and ripped. I was bald and ripped, and and, and really, pow- and really, really, really white. <laughs> <laughs> so you could have been powder. Yeah, if I looked at the sun, I was I was gonna fry. It was no like, kidding. <laughs> oh my wow, I'm gonna advocate for oh, an F3 name change. For a name change. Oh yeah. <laughs> So he, yeah, he needs to be powered. Oh gosh! <laughs> that's yeah, awesome. yeah, that's what they. Well, call Tammy me. got a, a uh, Tammy actually got an F three name. They named her Leather. Le- really? Yeah. Oh wow! It's, Leather. Uh, yeah. Uh, what is the story behind that? Uh, well, <laughs> so my name, my name is Chap, and and so Leather uh, Chap. <laughs> and, so she yeah, got, that's, she that's got clever. Leather. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she doesn't like it. Uh, 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 <laughs> <laughs> she doesn't oh like gosh. that at all. She does not like, like that. Name about uh, all day. <laughs> we have a guy named Recovery. Yeah. So we we named his son Do Not Resuscitate. Oh gosh. <laughs> he didn't like that. Too much. Like, oh no. Ten seconds. Uh, seconds. DNR. Uh, yes. Five seconds. Here we go. Welcome back to Putting the Pieces Back Together, presented by Purple Heart Homes. You can find out more about us at phhusa.org. And we are now blessed with the joy of living, as uh, Pat Shannon would say, uh, with Devil Dog Devin and the Project of the Week. Finally. Finally. finally, (laughs) Devin has come back to Statesville. Uh, I've been here the whole time. (laughs) Tell us about the project of the, the week. The project right? of the week. Uh, so, so this project was brought to. Oh my gosh, this sounds like a radio play. This project was brought to us by iHeartRadio. Okay. This project was brought to us <laughs> okay. by iHeartRadio. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> you do have a voice for radio. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so uh, Vernon Smith, uh, he he wanted us to specifically mention what he did in in the army All which right. was uh, he was on the berlin wall he was a guard okay. on the berlin wall yeah and for those of you who were too long, young to remember the berlin wall that was 
was it 1961 uh, USSR erected that Some, thing? Somewhere in there. Yeah, yeah, separating East and West Germany. East and, and West Berlin. Ber- Berlin, excuse yeah. me. Yes, I apologize. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, I'm not quite as well versed in well, my history as they, you they are. They call it you the know? Berlin Wall, not the German They wall. do. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's fair. That's uh, a clue. <laughs> Sprochen Sie Deutsch? <laughs> 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 Well, he he spent some time guarding that wall, and uh, I, I guess was he making sure it didn't go anywhere? Well, uh, I I guess just making sure folks didn't cross over and and such. And uh, but we uh, were encouraging people to cross. We over. were encouraging people. May, yeah. Maybe maybe uh, encourage the guys on the other the side. Other side weren't. weren't uh, they didn't you know. want people out. Yeah, so, so I, I I I don't know what you do as a guard on on the on the eastern side. I think it's of to that. make sure that the guys on the other side weren't up to any shenanigans. Probably so. I think that's yeah, what it yeah. Well, it was sort of like the DMZ up between North and South Korea. Absolutely, yeah. and and that time in service it meant a lot to him, and uh, he yeah. was uh, that that was that was something that that, that really did you stuck talk to him it. about what it felt like for him when the wall came down? Uh, you know, I I didn't get that chance. Uh, Tim Bates yeah. is his was his project manager. I'd be Interested to hear what his thoughts were absolutely. when that wall came down. Maybe we could do a little short segment with him. That was, day. you know, when the yeah. when the Berlin Wall came down, um, there was no one in the world that ever thought that would happen. I mean, we we just thought that was just going to go on forever, right. and 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 then that thing came down just and overnight. The, yes, the, the overnight Germans did it. Yeah, they just, yeah, they just, just came like that's together, enough. Yeah, and the civilians yeah, just ripped it, it down. It, it was crazy. It was amazing. Yeah. Well, so iHeart reached out to us, and what we did was we just facilitated this project uh, with, uh, I believe, Comfort Systems in Charlotte, North Carolina, donated the the HVAC system for this oh, fella, cool. and just came together. He, he, it's something that he couldn't afford, but, yeah. but you know. He wanted to uh, give back to to those who who gave to him. Yeah. So actually, the the first thing he did after we completed his project is he joined the Hearts of Honor program. Yes, he did. Yeah, and so what, what's amazing is is how often these veterans we help want to give back, yeah. and uh, and they 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 can do that in many ways. You can do that through volunteerism. We have chapters all over the U.S. You can do that by going to phhusa.org and uh, donating one time, or you can join join the Hearts of Honor Club, which is it's just However much you want to give every month, you know, 5, 10, mm-hmm. 15, whatever you can afford, and you can help a veteran, uh, just like uh, Vernon Smith. Uh, well, the cool thing about the Hearts of Honor Club, which has been around, we, it, it's not been a program we've had on going on for too long, but uh, mm-hmm. four or five years. The cool thing about it is, is when people decide, like, hey, I'm going to allocate $10 a month for Purple Heart Homes, it builds predictability into our cash flow, right? And and, and cash flow is king, right? And, and to be able to predict out over the course of a year, and that helps us to say, hey, yes, we are going to have enough funding to do these projects, um, and provide that predictability uh, into our systems so that so that we can do what it is we do. And so to have a veteran who got helped. Uh, to make that commitment to give back and pay it forward for other veterans, Man. that's really cool. So. Yeah, it's really amazing. And yeah, uh, so, awesome. so thank you, Vernon Smith. For, yeah, so uh, that, for that's awesome. That. Thank you. Yeah, Vernon, thank you, brother. And uh, thank you, Devin, for the project of the week. That's awesome. We'll uh, we'll be looking forward to what you got to say next week. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. something awesome might come out of your mouth. Uh, you uh, know, no? occasionally. Okay. All right. <laughs> so, uh, hey, so we're back with uh, Dr. Paul Veach, um, self-proclaimed doctor. <laughs> no, right. so, 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 uh, proclaimed by me, me in as trouble a doctor. With my license yeah. um, licensed professional counselor with the Yardo Statesville Schools um, and uh, helping kids through trauma, but then... Uh, uh, on the side, uh, which is not really a side job, it's almost like a full-time job of, uh, re- of organizing these reboot classes, and uh, he does a really good job at it. And so, uh, when it comes to uh, putting on something like this, you got to have you got to have folks to uh, to chip in. It doesn't happen. Uh, one person can't do it all, and and it takes people that that uh, want to give up their time um, and help out with something like this. Um, Paul, can you? Um, can you, it's from your perspective, uh, what, what is the importance of, of having people to volunteer? Well, it's, it's critical. I mean, it's really a ministry to volunteers, mm-hmm. not just volunteers right. ministering. Yeah. You know, it's a re- reciprocal process. Yeah. Didn't say that right. That's today. a big word. That's a big <laughs> That's word. That's a big word. You got to set a stake now for using that word. Yeah, reciprocal. Yeah. Reciprocal. Yeah. Um, and, you know, the folks at, at Reboot, are really good at providing 
some guidance yeah um, as you're building your leadership team um, and I think the way it rolls it really develops leadership in your volunteer group mm-hmm so we all share in these roles, and those roles are kind of flexible. And you know, I might do this this round, and next semester you might do something else. Yeah, right. You know? Right. And and so, I mean, we've had over 10, 11 people in the first responder class leave the class mm-hmm. in, in the four and a half years that it's been going on. Yeah. Um, and so we've got a, a wealth of people out there who can advocate. Yeah. From firsthand experience. Sure. How great the class is. From, and talk their buddies into coming. When when you <clears throat> volunteer for something about like this or any, any other other things that you volunteer to do, what what is that? What's the um what's the payoff for you? Well for me, you know, I'm clinically trained. So so I take these research based interventions, I go I go to these long lengthy trainings and they're all technical and skill based and mm-hmm. psychological and, you know, then I try to, you know, use those skills on, on people, for people, with people. And, you know, I see maybe some growth psychologically or emotionally. But we've got, got these uh, spiritual wounds. Mm-hmm. You know, we've got this moral injury thing. Mm-hmm. Um, and after a while of, of serving, you, you can kind of develop secondary trauma yourself hearing story after story after yeah. story you get this vicarious trauma yeah. going on and it can lead to burnout and compassion fatigue yeah you step into one of these courses it takes a, a grassroots down to earth concrete mm-hmm. layman you know friendly yeah. way of approaching trauma that's very simple but effective and it's addressing spiritual impacts it helps the person is volunteering. Yeah, it does. And so, so I, I got a nice refresh, you know, from volunteering uh, with his reboot courses myself. Mm-hmm. It helped me, um, you know, ward off some of those effects of burnout. Vicarious trauma. And yeah. vicarious healing, yeah. too. You're listening to Putting the Pieces Back Together, presented by Purple Heart Homes. Wow. That yeah. was good, man. Good? Yeah. yeah, that was good. <laughs> yeah. Wow, wow that's impressive, man. That was impressive. Very, very radio yeah. Wow, well, that was very radio y. Yeah. I'll, I'll have to start uh, doing the, the advertisements for it. <laughs> that's right, yeah. Time. Hey, Devin, can you come in and record it? <laughs> yes, I can. <laughs> um, I, that's interesting. Um, vicarious trauma is something that those of us in the helping profession um, mm-hmm. have to guard against. And, and if you don't, if you're not aware it's happening, uh, if you're not aware it's a possibility, um, and and anybody it can it can happen to anybody. I like to call um, it helpers fatigue. Helpers fatigue. Sometimes a, you need a rest. Yeah, that's right. And and uh, the I I would call it um, uh, I used to call it uh, walking through the tobacco field, right? And so for those of you that don't know anything about prime and tobacco and growing up on a farm, hmm. is that when you walk you do your you know priming of tobacco you're it's it's usually in the summer and it's hot and you're you're tempted to not have your body covered with something because it's so hot and you're brushing up against tobacco leaves all day long and tobacco enters through nicotine enters through the skin and and you can get can make you physically ill by being overloaded with with tobacco and and so when when you when you walk in a in a field full of trauma mm-hmm. and uh, with with multiple individuals that that are experiencing trauma yeah. if you're not careful that that trauma especially if you're empathetic especially if you and you want to be empathetic right you want to be able to you want to be able to feel what other people are feeling um and but if you're not careful that can seep into your life and then you can realize hey i'm really short-tempered today or uh, i'm really i'm really impatient and uh or um, cynical. Yeah, or cynical, which is that's probably the worst. And then so in the first responder community and the in you know, EMS, police, fire, it, it's a it's a common thing that happens because every time, you know, a call comes in, um, our first responders are going out to somebody's worst day. Right? The, right. It's their ba- it's their bad day. I mean, how many times do you call nine one one in your life? Right? 
You know, most people call 911. Uh, they can count it on their on their hand mm-hmm. the times they've called. But first responder, they get 911 calls multiple times every day, multiple times every day. And the other, on the other end of that call is somebody's worst day. And if they're not careful, um, that can lead to mm-hmm. uh, all kinds of all kinds of issues. You know, so uh, um, volunteers go through that as well. Right. And, exactly. and our volunteers go through that. Um, and uh, but doesn't mean we don't do it. No, right. Doesn't right. mean we don't do it. It's hard work. Um, and, you know, when you go and volunteer at the at the homeless shelter, you know, and you and you see the way other people are living um, and you see them with uh, um, housing insecurity and and, and you're, you're driving back to your nice house that's climate controlled and has air conditioning in it and uh, it, it you can you can be tempted to compartmentalize and and wall yourself off from that and and lose your uh, ability to care uh, which is a, I think is the most dangerous thing um, going forward you know so uh, but um, so Paul tell us about we've got just a few minutes left tell us about the upcoming classes that that are going on around our county and how people can find out about it okay so if you're interested in a first responders class We'll have one offered at the South Iredale Fire Department um, this coming month, March the 2nd. Uh, you would contact Melinda Sherrill at 704-880-0853 um, for more information about that. Or you can go to RebootRecovery.com, and there's a little spot there where you can slide down to locations, mm-hmm. and you'll see... Uh, Statesville or Mooresville, yeah. um, North Carolina. You can select one of those, and the course offerings that are in the area will will show up on a little map mm-hmm. that you can click on. Um, we'll also have a trauma recovery class um, at present is full, but um, we're starting that class this week at Western Avenue Baptist Church, and we'll begin again in in September mm-hmm. with that course. And my hope is that other churches and organizations in the community will um begin other trauma courses yeah. um you know in a in a community about our size of of statesville you know one trauma class for veterans is probably enough yeah. one for first responders is probably enough i don't know that 10 trauma recovery courses would be enough yeah it's almost like there's no such thing as too many so yeah, i agree with that yeah. so if you're a minister or a community leader out there or anybody out there who belongs to a church or an organization where you'd like a trauma recovery course, give me a call um, at 704-450-8116, and I'd be happy to guide you through it. That's awesome, Paul. Thank you. Yeah, and if you're a combat veteran and you're listening or you're watching, um, we are having, we're starting a, uh, a our spring course at, it's going to be at Purple Heart Homes. Um, and uh, at our uh, in our conference room there, and that's going to start on February the 21st. Uh, Lindsey Grindle, uh, who is going to be the co-leader this time, and so that's she's great. super talented and a female combat veteran. Her husband works uh, at Purple Heart Homes. Uh, some North our, Ardell folk. Man. Yeah, some North Ardell folks. So uh, <laughs> uh, really excited about having that, and so that's going to start again. That's going to start fe- February 21st. Uh, we're going to run a six-week course. Um, and uh, food uh, is provided uh, at all of these uh, all of these classes, so you can come come just for the meal. Right? It's it's good food. Yeah, yeah just uh, come for the food. There was one story that came out of Reboot the the fir- some of the first combat courses that this guy showed up, combat veteran, and he would show up for the meal, and then he would just get up and leave, right? And he wouldn't <laughs> yes. stay for the class. But every week, like for twelve weeks, he came. And ate and left, right? <laughs> and then and then a couple months later, they ran the course again. He showed back up uh, and ate every meal and then would leave. Never never stayed. Two courses, like 24 weeks, he just came and <laughs> ate the food. And then finally in the third course, after about week four, um, he ended up sitting through the class, ended up graduating, and then went on and has now been leading a class uh, for five years. <laughs> wow. So, yeah. <laughs> And it all started with the food. The food. Yeah, it all started with the food. So, uh, oh my. Hey, so uh, hey, next week you don't want you're gonna want you don't want to miss this. We've got um, 
Uh, Bobby Hainig, he's a state senator, uh, is going to be on with us next week via Zoom. Uh, he's an Army veteran. He's going to talk about how in the world he got into politics after being an Army wow. veteran and having a business called The Pool Guy. The Pool Guy? Yeah, right. Wow. So uh, we're going to have him zooming in next week, and hopefully John will be back and not on another secret mission to Arizona. That's right. So. Somebody needs to keep you straight. I can't do That's it. That's right. I know. <laughs> yeah, somebody needs to keep you straight. I can't do it either. So, Hey, thanks for tuning in. Uh, we'll see you next week here on Putting the Pieces Back Together. been listening to Putting the Pieces Back Together with John Galena and Brad Borders. Join us again next Tuesday at 8 a.m. and Saturday at 5 p.m. for Putting the Pieces Back Together on News Talk WSIC.